Today we're going to discuss the second episode of Rings of Power Season 2. Just like last video, we're not only going to look at what happened through the story, but I will give some commentary along the way. And this video is going to be divided in four different parts. Like the last episode, I'm going to look at each different story arc. So first of all, we're going to take a look at the Halbrand Anatar story arc. And then we're going to take a look at the elves. Next up, we're going to take a look at the stranger and finally to the dwarves of Khazad Doom. So let's start the video with the story of Halbrand or Anatar. At the end of the first episode, we see Halbrand arriving back in Eregion, but Calabrimbor is not. And this is all because Galadriel said to him, don't treat with Halbrand. If she just had said to Calabrimbor that this was actually Sauron, Calabrimbor would have believed her and he would never meddle with Sauron or Halbrand and just saying don't meddle with him, don't talk to him. Yeah, it... I still can't believe that really happened and this bugs me. This idea, I don't really like it. It's like we have to make this story work and this is the only way that we can do it. So to make Galadriel hesitant to talk about the true identity of Halbrand, which if she had done, Halbrand would have never come back to Eregion. He wouldn't be let in, he would be killed. She wouldn't bring it into the story. I just think that they just did this because this was the only way to make it all make sense. Yes, they changed the story arc dramatically. How rings of power were created if you want to know a deeper connection to the story of the rings of power i will put a video here on the top where i talk about the creation of the rings of power what made them create the rings of power so you can just all where i'll explain it all to you eventually his assistant comes talking to halbrand yeah you cannot come in calabrimbor's assistant feels compassion for him. During this time that Halbrand waits, we first see a glimpse of Ithildin and I really enjoyed this moment because this is one of the moments that I really look forward to. Calabrimbo and Narvi working together on the doors of Durin. I have this fear that they are not going to work on this much and that this will just be a side piece in this series but I really do hope that we're going to see enough time on the creation of the door of Durin and I really enjoyed this moment that Calabrimbo just found a way with the remaining Mithril that he got from Elrond that Elrond got from Durin that he created this substance Ithildin that only reflects in moonlight and I really enjoyed this moment and just shows how skilled Calabrimbo really is. And eventually Calabrimbo says, okay, I'm going to meet with Halbrand and Halbrand convinces him to talk to him and he tells that the rings worked wonders, that they were actually great and Calabrimbo was actually happy that he finally got news from the rings because he was dying to know if the rings actually worked or not, but he didn't receive any news from Gilgalad. Halbrand starts to manipulate in Calabrimbo and he says, I'm not actually who you think I am. I am not a mortal man, I am not the king of the Southlands, I am Anatar, and he makes this amazing entrance and I really enjoyed his entrance, the clouds around him, all of his dark, really enjoyed this moment that he shows himself, hey I am Anatar, I am a sharer of gifts, this is not really what Anatar means, it's lord of gifts, but Calabrimo said, ah, a lord of gifts. I'm not really fond of this way that he said I'm a sharer of gifts. He could have said I'm the lord of gifts, Anatar. This would have made much more sense. He said, come on, we gotta make more rings. We, not just for the elves, but for the men dwarves as well. And Calabrimbo says, why don't we need to re make rings for them? And he, uh, uh, Anatar says, well, we are healed, but the dwarves need to, and the men need to be healed as well. And if they want to battle against the forces of Adar, the forces of Sauron, that they have to create these rings. And he says that Calabrimbo will be remembered as the Lord of the Rings, which is not really true because Anatar is going to be. And let's go to the next part of the video and this is the story of the elves. And Galadriel has a vision where Calabrimbo says the ring verse in black speech. So she wakes up to a conversation where Gil-galad and a lot of other elves discuss that we don't need to worry about Sauron for now because he is alone. Adar doesn't want to work with him. The orcs doesn't want to work with him. We know that he is Halbrand, so there's no reason to panic right now. Galadriel talks to Gil-galad that she has this visions of foresight and that she's going to need to go to a region. And Gilgalad says, visions, my visions are as well are amplified. And I really enjoyed that they are, since they are both ring bearers, they are talking more openly to each other. But Gilgalad says, 
you're not going to go alone to Region because Halbrand already deceived you and he believes that Halbrand is still in Galadriel and that she is she would still be able to be manipulated by Halbrand. He says you can go but you need a team. So she goes and look for Elrond who is working on a boat in the shipyards and there we meet Elrond again who is working on a boat in the Grey Havens. And Elrond just throws away the idea to go to Regan. He doesn't trust her anymore. And he says, no, I'm not going to go with you. No way. If you're still wearing this ring. After this moment, Galadriel goes away and Elrond goes talking to Círdan. And Círdan once again gives this great and wise advice. Says, if you're worried about your friends, don't push them away. Just push them in the right direction. Once again, just like I said in the previous episode where we covered episode 1, I really love the character of Círdan. I really enjoy his portrayal. Gil-galad says to Gladriel, yes you can go to Eregion but you're not going to loan. Elrond is coming with you and then he reveals that Elrond is going to be actually in charge of his company. And from the previous episode which I didn't really cover, Gil-galad sends a message to Eregion that Halbrand is actually Sauron but in this episode we can clearly see that the elves didn't make it. They were actually killed. I found this also a bit strange. Why would you send only two elves with such a crucial information? Once again, it's like we want to let people know that we're doing our best to show that Calabrimbo that Halbrand is actually Sauron. We can't really do it because otherwise the story would be messed up. Once again, because they have changed the complete story of the creation of the Rings of Power. Now we're going to go to the part where the stranger plays. And we see one of these masked men running away to a fortress in Rune. And there we meet the auto wizard. We can clearly see that he is definitely evil and he summons back the real Slim Shady. Yeah. <laughs> there he sends the men with the mask to hunt the Istar. So the stranger Nori and Poppy, after taking a different route, they come to a well and there is a staff next to it, just as we see in the dream of the stranger in episode 1. They take some water from the well and this well has an amazing alarm system. Every time the bucket drops, it, there's a rock smashing to the iron cap of the well, which just makes some sort of a bell sound and just alarms these men that the stranger and Nori and Poppy are actually there at the well. So they come to there and when the stranger wakes up, he takes his staff and create a sandstorm. The staff that he founds is just a mere walking stick and it diminishes, it just evaporates during the sandstorm and he once again loses control. And at that moment as well, Nori and Poppy are just blown away by this sandstorm, by this tornado, never to be seen again. For now. And finally we're going to go take a look at the story of the dwarves and we see a nice amazing shot of the east entrance of Khazad Tomb, the one that the Fellowship of the Ring comes out after Gandalf had fallen with the Balrog of the Bridge of Khazad Tomb. And I really enjoyed this visual, this just shows the skill of the dwarves, how greatly their doors actually are. And then we see Disa and Durin the fourth walking in the market and we see that the aftermath of him being thrown away by his father says that he isn't really the rightful king anymore to the throne and that money is really tight. And then Disa notices that there's going to be an earthquake and this earthquake destroys the entrances where the light comes through that we can see with the mirrors reflecting the light so that they can grow crops deep within the realm of Khazad Doom and the lights go down. And according to Narf, he believes that the earthquake comes from the eruptions of Mount Doom. That it stretches all the way to Khazad Doom. And Disa, who clearly sinks to the mountains, but it doesn't work anymore. And the last light shaft closes. So they don't really know where to dig anymore, where to go, restore their realm, restore Khazad Doom. We know we, during this story arc of the dwarves, we see both of the dwarves, Durin the third and Durin the fourth, being stubborn. Disa tries to convince both of them, yeah, you, could, you should go talk, talk to each other, work things out, but they are just too stubborn, which is one of the traits of the dwarves being that stubborn. I don't know why they still want to have two Durins at the same time. Durin reincarnates seven times and they all just look alike. This having two Durins alive at the same moment doesn't make sense. How can you be 
the reincarnated Durin from the previous Durins if the previous Durin is still alive. This doesn't make any sense. So at the end, Disa and Durin IV receive a letter from Celebrimbor that they are asked in Regia. So overall, I do believe that in the first two episodes that we already have seen, we see a lot more locations, a lot more different locations than we saw in season one. And I do love that there are much more extras on the show. So let me know in the comment section what do you think of this episode. Have you enjoyed it? What did you like? What did you didn't like? If you haven't seen my breakdown of the first episode, then I will put a link right here for you. So enjoy the next one. Bye bye.